The M3 promises massive improvements, but is the hype real? Let's find out if this tiny chip can live up to the hype. So in 2020, Apple changed the game by transitioning from the Intel processors to their very own silicone chip called the M1. This set the stage and pushed boundaries even further than before. Apple's M3 chip is killing it with a three new nanometer node technology. It's like Apple's version of leveling up in a video game. They've collected all of the power-ups with their M1 and M2, and now the M3 is their boss level move. The M3 will be the first three nanometer chip in a personal computer, which is huge. So the wizards behind this technology is TSMC. If you don't know who they are, they supply chips to clients like Apple, Amazon, and Google. They're huge. The 3 nm chips are not just a pretty face. They're faster, more efficient, and promises a longer battery life. Think like 25 to 30 hours on a single charge. And because of this, the chips are about 25% more expensive. But hey, quality has its price. With the 3 nm process also offering a significant increase in transistor count within the chip, the performance gain should surpass the typical 15 to 20% seen in previous generations. So if you don't know what a transistor is, think of a transistor as the heartbeat of modern electronics amplifying electronic signals. Transistors are the building blocks of the chip and with more of them packed into the same space, performance skyrockets. These chips could be 30 to 40% more efficient and could propel Apple way ahead of Intel for a substantial period. Intel chips right now are struggling with energy efficiency and are working on maintaining performance gains without increased power consumption. And the Apple's iPhone 15 Pro will be the first device to get this 3nm chip. So if we decode what's coming in the September 12th event for the iPhone, we can gauge what's exactly in store for us for the M3 lineup. So from a base level standpoint, the MacBook Pro is set to have 12 to 14 CPUs and 18 to 20 GPU cores. The M3 Max will have 16 CPU cores with 32 to 40 GPU cores, which is a significant increase from the 12 CPU cores that we have right now. The M3 Ultra will have 32 CPU cores with 64 to 80 GPU cores. We should also get a bump in memory as well. German adds that memory configurations might vary across the releases, noting that they're testing the MacBook Pro models with 36 gigabyte and 48 gigabytes of memory. Now, if you don't know who Mark Gurman is, let me explain. Mark Gurman is a prominent tech journalist known for his accurate insights into Apple. So when it comes to buying a Mac, there are two types of people, those that want the latest and greatest for bragging rights and power users who need performance gains. Let me know which side you're on in the comments below. It looks like Apple is targeting their entry-level models for the first releases with the M3 chip, which are going to be your 13 and possibly your 15-inch MacBook Air, your 13-inch MacBook Pro, and the 24-inch iMac and Mac Mini. This will be huge for the 24-inch iMac as it's still operating on the original M1. So rumors indicate that the M3 chips will maintain the same 8-core CPU and 10-core GPU as the M2. However, Unlike the M1 and M2 chips, which were built on the 5 nanometer process, the M3 is being developed on a way more efficient 3 nanometer process. This translates to a chip that's both more energy efficient and significantly more powerful. So they did just recently have an update on the MacBook Air 15 inch Pro, which makes this specific model a little bit of a wild card. So it's anyone's guess on how Apple will manage the M3 rollout for this line. The M3 Pro should be expected to appear in the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro along with the Mac Mini. And the M3 Max should be in the 16 inch MacBook Pro and Mac Studio. The M3 Ultra should be in the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. But don't get too excited because German does say that the higher end Macs with the N3 Pro, Max, and Ultra aren't expected until 2024. But good old Mark German has noted that Apple plans to have two events this fall, one September 12th for the iPhone 15 and potentially the Mac event in October. But October events is about as consistent as my Wi-Fi. Thanks, Comcast. German's most recent reports also cast doubt on whether an October event will actually happen, which suggests that Apple might not have initiated event planning. Given the amount of time and effort required for these events, it's increasingly likely that a dedicated event may not be in the cards for this year. Also, TSMC might have a production dilemma as they're having trouble producing the amount of 3NN chips for the Apple's upcoming devices. So if it comes down to having to choose between the iPhone and the Mac, German suggests that the iPhone will get priority. With that being said, only the iPhone 15 Pro model will get the A17 chip. This actually leaves Apple with enough 3 nm chips to support their Mac lineup this year. A silver lining, perhaps? And demand for laptops are actually weaker than expected. In July, shipments for the 15-inch MacBook Air were 50% less than they initially estimated. The economy and some other factors play a significant role in this. So with the TSMC struggle on producing enough chips and the demand being low for laptops, Apple might actually pull this off. With 
Apple potentially securing TSMC's entire 2023 supply of the 3NM chips, Intel might have to wait until 2024 to get their hands on this tech. So where does this actually leave us with the M3 release? It could very well be introduced through press releases and a virtual event. German also spilled the beans on some future plans, so the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models are likely aiming for a mid 2024 debut. Meanwhile, Apple's cooking up something big with a 32 inch Mac, expected to make its entrance either in the coming fall or following spring. Mind you, it's still in the early stages of development, so keep an eye on the calendar as Mac Studio and the Mac Pro are on the horizon, set to grace us in the next summer to early 2025. But Keep in mind that these timelines are not set in stone and will depend on several factors, including TSMC's production scalability. This means that Apple's taking over. I'm just kidding. But they will have major bragging rights for this one. The world of Mac is on the cusp of a new era, but should you jump right in? Well, that's only something that you can decide. As always, take these rumors with a grain of salt, but also keep your eyes peeled for official announcements. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more updates. I'll catch you in the next one. Power consumption. Blech. electronic signals. Fuck, that's stupid. What? Oh, I see what happened here. Okay.